name is Andre Pane. Uh, I'm founder of uh, 99 Tastes, an uh, online delicatessen store, which tries to be a bit different than the others. So 99 Tastes um, has the basic, basic idea to offer a maximum of 99 products. In each product category, we only have one product in there. So if there is an olive oil category, we fill it with one product at one point in time. This product may be in there for two, three, four weeks, and then we change it against another one. But at one point in time, people never get confused and say, oh, I don't know if I should take the left one or the right one or the bitter one or the sweet one, whatever. It doesn't say anything anyway on the internet. So it's a trust-based system. We recommend and we say, okay, consumer, user, our buyer, our customer, trust us. And this is our suggestion for this point in time. Give it a try and um, yeah, take one of these 99 products or a bunch of them. So the technology setup as such started easy. We, we chose Magento as a platform and you get it for free as a community edition. We bought, I don't know, $490 a template which we put on our shop. So within a couple of days we had a shop. We want to be clean. We have it very white, we have it only a very clear red and black logo. So it's that part of communication that we try to achieve on a, on a non-verbal way. But on top of that, what we have done is um, we have built in a feedback system so our customers can rate our products and of course the more customers rate products the more there is a second third and fourth opinion about this product and that will help creating trust. We are live since July um, so it's four months four and a half months and um, we started the company first of May so it's been really two months of, of setting everything up then uh, since July we started in the middle, of course, of the summer break, which was not ideal, but <laughs> gave us also some time to establish processes. And um, yeah, now, now in November, December, we see that stuff is picking up. Finding skill in startups, I think, generally is one of the most crucial and difficult questions. Um, I was lucky, Christian, my co-founder, um, we met here at a Lean startup event at one of the many startup locations around Munich. And we just chatted about, you know, what, what could be done and what, what are the ideas. And I came up with this less is more and shop and he liked it. So we had a first initial kickoff workshop together with a third man, a pure technician. And uh, we discussed the idea and it ended that basically Christian and I said, okay, that's, that's great, let's start it. And on our way, we were looking for further skill, especially in the area of marketing, design. And we had people on board and some of them left again. So at the current point, it's really the two of us again. Um, it's really hard to find somebody who's willing to put that time and that energy into a startup which doesn't pay off in the first 10, 12, 20, you don't know how many months until you really will make money with that. So I think it's, um, it's a bit difficult and maybe that's also one of the things certainly in a city like Munich where there is so much business, there's so much opportunity to earn a good load of money, right, with a regular job or as a freelancer. Um, it seems sometimes that this is one of our deficits that we have in Munich, besides all the other benefits, that we have too little people who, who are eager to do startups. I think startups tend to have a very different management mentality or co-working or team spirit mentality, right? It's just a flat hierarchy. There's so much to do. Everybody takes his share in the responsibility. Give an early start uh, and, and coaching as well, right? I mean, in my case now, I'm not a very young generation anymore. I'm not in the 20s. So I can, of course, also help people to grow in their, in their own career, to give them basically some lessons that I've learned in my life. Coming from that perspective that you as a more senior founder can also give background information, how to do things, you know, share your experience. I think it's a good way to really give people responsibility at a young age. And in a corporate, you wouldn't have that. You would basically put in a corner and sit on, sit on one desk and just do whatever you do for a year or two and have others tell you what to do. And I think that's, that's quite attractive. You can grow very fast in a startup. You can really learn a lot of different things. There's many different roles which need to be taken. And as you're so close to everybody else, you can also see and watch what the others are doing. So the learning curve is dramatic. We are intending to work together with one of the established brick and mortar delicatessen stores that we have in Germany. So we're talking to some of them and we think that we are a nice young extension to their existing business because we want to reach people who are end 20, beginning 40, in between something, right? who earn enough money to afford maybe buying what we have, but who are not established in a sense of being gourmets or you know, delicatessen buyers. 
So that's where we see our biggest opportunities, that one of these companies really sees the value in having us as a strategic component of their own business and therefore investing uh, the necessary money to have the growth that we need, which we will invest into mainly, of course, uh, marketing uh, to a certain degree, but also into optimizing the platform, the processes, uh, storage delivery, all these things to become more and more professional. Yeah. So that's the plan for the next year and years, hopefully, to come. The biggest tips and the most important tips I would give to young entrepreneurs is pick your co-founders wisely. Really try to understand who these people are, see how, how well you work together, how well you also your skills you know, add up to each other and don't overlap so much. The next big part is really don't spend too much time in planning your business plan. You should have it as a framework, you should be able to do some kind of business planning, financial planning, you understand how the system works and how the money flows and comes in and goes out, but don't waste too much time on it. The most important thing is really start building, start doing, get in touch with your customers and your suppliers, talk to the market. Don't, you know, lock yourself into a small locker room and wait until something's happening. The third advice would be get additional skill on board, senior skill if necessary, if you run into situations where you don't know how to handle it anymore. I've seen too many young startups wait too long to get advice from people with a different background because they thought they can do it alone. And sometimes that may work. And it's not a question of intelligence and it's not a question about not being able to do it yourself. The point is you don't have much time, right? If you take three months to learn what the other guy has at a finger snap, then don't waste your time with learning it. Get the other guy on board even if it costs you some shares or it costs you some money, but it may be the point which decides if you survive or not. Yeah.